see the same faces. Six or seven weeks into it, I see the same amount of energy. Six or seven weeks into it, you know, we're at the exact same place. And I've been doing a lot of praying and, and I've been questioning myself and questioning God and, and, and how everything is just, just where we're at. And the fact of the matter is that we've lost our awe. Oh, it doesn't matter. What we've done is we've taken Wednesday nights and we've taken church and we've taken God. And what we've done is we fit them into a nice little pocket. And what we do is we go to church on Wednesdays. We go up here on Wednesdays and we do church. We go on the weekends and we do church. And it doesn't cost us a thing. Because it's not important doesn't matter doesn't matter church doesn't matter God doesn't matter cross crucifixion none of it matters Brian wait a second you're a pastor you're a preacher you're not supposed to be saying it doesn't matter evidently it doesn't matter because we don't let it matter because we show up and we do church. We show up half prepared. Or we don't show up to practice at all on Tuesdays. And, and believe me, I'm not picking on them. I find myself getting halfway through the week with meetings and with all this other stuff that I've got to do and making phone calls and trying to take care of this and trying to take care of that and trying to make sure that, that, that we get some work done on the house and help Abby get the laundry done and take care of Brandon and all this kind of stuff. And then I get halfway through the week and I realize, oh man, Wednesday's almost here. I've got to get, I've got to get my stuff together. I've got to get my junk together. I've made it not matter. Every time you guys go into your home with your parent or your sibling, your brother or sister, or you hang out with your friends who don't go to church, or maybe they go to church but it hasn't clicked, and you know about the way that they're living their life, it hasn't clicked, and you don't say anything to them. You don't even invite them to church. You don't, you don't, I don't care if you invite them to this church. Heck, if they go to another church, go to their church with them until they get it. I don't care. But what we do is when we don't get to that point, when we won't even share, when we won't even invite, when we won't even ask them to come, when we don't even let our lives make a difference, what we're telling them and what we're telling God is that it doesn't matter. But Brian, I mean, it, it does. You know, I'm a good person. I read my Bible and, and I pray sometimes. And, and you know, I mean, I don't smoke anymore and I don't drink that much. And, you know, my girlfriend and I, we fool around a little bit, but not a whole lot. I mean, it's good. You're still saying it doesn't matter by the life that you live. I say it doesn't matter when I let half my week go by before I begin to start preparing. When they don't show up to practice or don't show up prepared, they're saying it doesn't matter. It matters. You know, I was doing a little research. And um, there's, um, we all know that Jesus kind of had his 12 disciples, the men that followed him around and everything. You know, but even after Jesus left, he was with them for three years, did his three-year ministry, and then he left. After he left, they went ahead and they lived their lives and they continued on preaching. But, but listen to this. This is, this is how some of the apostles died. The apostle Peter, Peter was the leader of the apostles after Jesus ascended into heaven. Peter was to believe to have been crucified upside down in Rome during the reign of Emperor Nero in 64 AD. He was crucified 
And the whole reason why was because the emperor and the soldiers are like, oh, you're a Christian, you're, you're, you're Jesus, whom you worship and whom you're testifying about. He, he was crucified on a cross. So you know what? In honor of that, we're gonna, we'll go ahead and crucify you on a cross too. Now, if you know anything about the crucifixion process, it usually took two to three days and with about eight to 12 hours of it being actually on the cross, nailed in, all that kind of stuff. Painful enough as it is. This is what Peter said. I want you to crucify me upside down because I am not worthy to be crucified in the same manner as my Savior. It mattered to him. It mattered to him. Andrew. Andrew was Simon Peter's brother. Before Andrew met Jesus, he had been a disciple of John um, the Baptist. And he preached in, in Greece. And Andrew was crucified in Greece on an X-shaped cross. So it was, it was like that, but it was shaped like an X. So instead of being like this, his legs, he actually had a nail there, a nail there, a nail here, a nail here. And that cross actually ended up becoming later on known as, as Andrew's cross. So he was crucified. John went on to write the book of Revelation, and although it's scarce, um, it scarcely documented evidence about exactly how he died, it is likely that he was exiled on an island where he possibly died of natural causes. So John went on and he preached so much, they, they actually took him on an island away from everybody else, and they just left him there to die. And he, that's how he lived out the rest of his life, on an island, exiled from everybody he knew and everything that he grew up and he was okay with it because it mattered to him. Bartholomew, also known as Nathaniel, he preached all over. And it's believed that he suffered the terrible double sentence of being flayed, alive, and crucified. Some of these apostles were literally tarred and burned alive and then crucified. Some of the tortures that they went through was they were beaten almost to death. And then they were brought back. And then they were beaten again almost to death and brought back. Because they didn't want the people crucifying and executing them and torturing them didn't want death to be an escape. And they went through it because it mattered. The Apostle Thomas preached in Persia in India where he was killed by four soldiers armed with spears. So basically he was just speared to death. He did it because it mattered. How did the Apostle Matthew die? He was formerly a tax collector. And he wrote the first book of the New Testament. He preached in Ethiopia and Persia. He's believed to have been axed to death with what's called a halberd. It's a pike fitted with an axe head. So he was basically just chopped up with an axe. And he went through that because it mattered. And I tell you just a couple of those just to tell you this. In Isaiah 26, verse 8, this is what he says. And I'm going to read this in three different translations, so, so listen to this. The first one is the Amplified. Yes, in the path of your judgments, O Lord, we wait expectantly for you. Our heartfelt desire is for your name and for the remembrance of you. The message translation, it says, we're in no hurry, God. We're content to linger in the path signposted with your decisions. Who you are and what you've done are all will ever want. And then in the NIV, yes, Lord, walking in the way of your laws, we wait for you. Your name and your renown are the desire of our hearts. This is what Isaiah is saying. God, you matter more than anything else. You matter 
more than anything else. You guys understand, this, this message is not a message of getting on to us. It's not, that's not the heart of it. The heart of it is just come back. Come back to what matters. Come back to what matters. We have prayer at 4 o'clock here on Wednesdays. 4 o'clock. We don't pray because it's fun. Um, I mean, there's no balloons or we're not playing dodgeball or, you know, we don't have beach balls and we're throwing it back and forth. I mean, that's not what goes on. And if we're honest... And where's Jacob? Oh, there's Jacob. Jacob was telling me, he's like, man, I can only pray for like 20 minutes at a time. And Robert was like, man, after 30 minutes, I find that I'm not really praying. I'm kind of sleeping, you know? And I mean, that's we're just, right? I mean, I've been there. I remember when I was, when I was in, in church, we had this kid that would walk to, um, to our church. And it was a denominational church, you know? And so, like, people were, like, getting slain in the spirit and falling out and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so he'd see people fall out and... <laughs> <laughs> and he of course he wasn't on stage but he 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 you know he'd see people and he so he'd do this and then every once in a while and this is how he would lay every once in a while this is what you'd see you know and a little bit later he'd make sure he wasn't the only one then he'd just lay back down and close his eyes and there was a couple times he fell asleep <laughs> out in the middle of the church <laughs> But you know, I say that I say that for this. We don't show up and we don't pray because it's fun or anything like that. We do it because we realize that it's necessity. It's ne- necess. Help me. There you go. There you go. We do it because it's important. We do it because it's vital. We do it because if we want if we want God to show up here. We've got to prepare here. And look, I know a lot of you could get here at 4 o'clock if you want to. And I'm not trying to guilt anybody into praying. I'm not. I'm telling that it's important. And that it's got to be a part. And I'm serious when I say, look. Can I be honest with you for just a minute? I'm not interested in making Journey Next the biggest, most talked about youth group. I'm really not. If you bring somebody and they get saved and then they go to a different church and they get plugged in and they get planted, you bring five people, they go to another church and that youth group grows and that church grows, I'm okay with that. Honest to goodness, I'm okay with that. If people never know the name Brian Ackerman, I'm totally fine with that. I wish it could be that way because it's, it's so not about me. It's really not. I just want people to know that it's important and that he matters. And we walk through life and and we see, you know, we're talking about handing out church, about doing mail outs, you know, like church cards and all this kind of stuff. And, And I can just see the people that aren't safe sitting there looking at that and going, is it gonna help? I mean, if I go to church, is it going to help? Is it going to change my life? When those people that don't go to church, or like I said, the ones that do, but they don't get it, when they see your life, does your life prove to them that it matters and that it's important? Or do they just look at you and say, nice person, but there's not really anything in their life compelling me to go to church with them? Your name and your renown are the desires of my heart. I wait for you. I long for you. Yes, Lord, walking in the ways of your laws, we wait for you. Your name and renown are the desires of our heart. We're in no hurry, God. We're content to linger in the path signposted with your decisions. Who you are and what you've done are all we'll ever want. 
Yes, in the path of your judgments, O oh Lord, we wait expectantly for you. Our heartfelt desire is for your name and for the remembrance of you. He was saying that.